Welcome back everyone, my name is Nick930 and today we're going to be taking a look back at the fifth game in the Battlefield franchise, Battlefield Bad Company. Bad Company is probably the furthest departure from the franchise's formula to date. It was released by DICE in summer 2008 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 consoles and was never made available for PC users, making it the first and only main Battlefield title to be a console exclusive. After the monumental success of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, DICE and EA Games had to make some big changes to their juggernaut military shooter game because the moderate success they had with Battlefield 2142 just wouldn't be able to compete. DICE decided to reinvent the franchise from scratch and built this game using the first iteration of the landmark game engine Frostbite. The Frostbite engine would allow for an unparalleled amount of sandbox warfare, with seemingly all objects in the game world being destructible in some way. In order to accommodate this new level of technology with the limited power of the consoles at the time, Bad Company had a much smaller scope. Bad Company was the first main entry in the series to offer a full campaign storyline to play with in single player. The story focused on a group of misfit soldiers thrown into an expendable unit called Bad Company. The player took control of Preston Marlowe, a basic looking soldier with a shady past that you wouldn't learn about until later in the story. You'd spend the game alongside Sarge, a squad leader whose retirement keeps getting pushed back at every turn, Sweetwater, a nerdy support gunner that's obsessed with the female dispatch officer on the radio, and Haggard, a demolitions expert that loves his job way too much and is often the comic relief in the story. The story follows the Bad Company squad as they go AWOL from the US military and hunt down gold bars that a rival mercenary group called the Legionnaires are using to pay off their soldiers. This storyline itself is much more lighthearted and comical plot in the comparison to the darker tone of the original games, but it resonated well with fans and people enjoyed the stark contrast between the new Battlefield and the newly popular Call of Duty franchise. The game only features a few missions to play, but each mission will take around 45 minutes to finish, making them pretty long missions. Levels are also designed to be very open-ended, giving the player the feeling of being part of a ragtag squad in the middle of an online battlefield match, just moving from objective to objective while the real fight wages miles away. The AI behaves much better than they did in the refractor engines. AI teammates will immediately teleport inside your vehicle if you decide to drive something, meaning you don't have to wait for them. And enemy soldiers will not immediately see you unless you walk into their line of sight or you make enough noise to alert them. Soldiers will also flank you, and there's different types of soldiers like the Legionnaires that are much more aggressive and difficult to fight, making it a lot more varied and interesting. The campaign also features collectible weapons that you are challenged to find and gold bars hidden in each level, giving the campaign a little bit more replay value. The multiplayer component of Bad Company retains the progression and unlocks of the more recent games, but the gameplay has changed significantly because of the smaller scale. Medics, for example, can no longer revive down teammates. Support units could not give ammunition. Players had to get their own ammunition from ammo crates at objective points. Players could not go prone. DICE claims that snipers going prone would be at too much of an advantage, and so the feature was never implemented. The maximum player count was reduced from 64 all the way down to 24. This also resulted in much smaller maps. The vehicle variety was reduced significantly due to the smaller size of the maps. Planes and jets were not featured as drivable vehicles in Bad Company. Only the brand new Rush game mode was available when the game launched in 2008. Players overwhelmingly requested that Conquest be returned to the game, and DICE thankfully added the mode in with a free update in Fall 2008. Squads could not be chosen and were instead assigned automatically, and there were no designated leader, meaning squad orders were non-existent. Because this was a console exclusive, communication suffered drastically and very few players actually were able to communicate, making it very difficult to take control of a losing situation. Commanders were also no longer featured in the game. There was no server list or dedicated servers at all. All servers were hosted by DICE, and if a player decided to start team killing, there really wasn't anyone to stop them. And finally, Bad Company was locked at 30 frames per second. So as you can see, Bad Company took a lot away from the franchise that many fans were not happy about. But the good news was that Bad Company had introduced the franchise to a larger community. The lighthearted and simplistic nature of the game brought Battlefield closer to being a household name, and without the switch to consoles, Battlefield might not have been as large as it is today. Uh, one of the coolest new features that Bad Company did introduce to the franchise was Rush. Rush appeared for the first time in Bad Company. Rush tasked an attacking team to use a limited amount of respawns to destroy two gold crates at each line of defense until they successfully destroyed them all. This mode worked perfectly in a small 24-player match of Bad Company and has become one of the most popular modes since Conquest. 
The mode has since been used in each Battlefield game with varying levels of success because most Battlefield games don't seem to pull it off lately because of the weird map designs. Bad Company 2 featured similar progression systems to previous Battlefields, allowing players to rank up 25 times and unlock new weapons and gadgets to help them compete. Some weapons, like the F2000, were locked to players who did not have veteran status. Veteran status was a way to award players who had played previous Battlefield games before Bad Company. Players would need to log onto a website, register Battlefield games through their veteran status account, and then they would eventually be eligible for the F2000 to use online. Just like in 2142, Bad Company offered a list of dog tags from all the players you knifed online, making it a lot of fun to try and collect and challenge your friends to get their dog tags. It's honestly a real shame that current Battlefield games just have abandoned this concept. Bad Company changed up the class system quite a bit from 2142 and added a fifth class. There was now an Assault, Recon, Support, which all those sound similar, a Specialist, and a Demolitions Expert. Now, the Assault class once again had access to the game's Assault Rifles. Because of Bad Company's focus on destruction, the Assault class always had access to a grenade launcher with several grenades, I think it was about seven grenades, to fire to help create your own doorways and take out enemies. The Assault class also had a healing syringe that you could use on yourself to bring your health back up. This could not be used on other players, this was just a personal thing to bring your health back up. The Recon class had sniper rifles and wore ghillie suits. Their rifles were incredibly powerful and was difficult to cross Bad Company's open maps with a decent team of enemy snipers. They also had motion sensor mines which could be used to ping enemy locations on the radar, and a guided smart bomb that allowed you to call in a missile strike on enemy vehicles. The support class had LMGs and could throw down medic boxes. They could not revive down teammates and could not resupply anybody. They also had an unlockable mortar strike device that could be used to call in a devastating barrage of explosive fire on a position in view. The Specialist had close range SMGs and silencers attached by default. These weapons dealt very little damage but had a very high rate of fire, making them excellent weapons for sneaking behind the enemy and just engaging in close quarter combat. Specialists had access to C4 explosives for destroying walls and vehicles. Demolitions experts were the game's anti-tank unit. They had access to shotguns, rocket launchers, and landmines. Battlefield Bad Company featured a very limited selection of vehicles compared to Bass Entries. Cars and trucks were available like Humvees and Vodniks, and they offered four seats and also a radio just like Battlefield Vietnam. In par for the course, a free downloadable map, players had access to a golf cart as well. Players once again had access to aquatic vehicles in Bad Company, but only one type of boat was available to both teams. This boat featured grenade launcher turrets and was decent for flanking the enemy and capturing bases from behind. Both teams had access to light tanks and heavy tanks. The light tanks had rapid fire explosive shots that did light damage to armor but could kill infantry pretty quickly. The secondary position also had access to a machine gun. If the tank needed to get away in a hurry, they could drop a smokescreen and retreat. The only way to repair your tank was to have a friendly specialist repair your vehicle. The heavy tank operated as you'd expect with a main cannon, smokescreen, and secondary 50 cal machine gun. There were only attack helicopters available in Bad Company, there were no planes. And these choppers could absolutely destroy an enemy team if they were not dealt with early. Since the game's anti-tank units only had access to AT rockets, you basically only could deal with helicopters with well-placed RPG shots, or a few of the anti-aircraft stationary weapons that were featured in some of the bases. The game featured no way to parachute, so if you were in a chopper as it was crashing, there was no chance of survival. Bad Company only featured 8 maps at launch, and were only available to be played in the Rush game mode. In Fall 2008, DICE released the Conquest game mode, and eventually all those 8 maps were going to be available to play in Conquest. They did add one new map, which was that golf course level, but there really wasn't much else, making it one of the weaker when it comes to DLC. Bad Company 1 had the potential to be one of the most balanced games in the franchise due to its more simplistic nature, but failed because of some significant flaws. The sniper rifles seemed to be an obvious issue in this game, with single shots above the waist being instant kills from all ranges with the M95, and very few ways to counter them. Players in vehicles also had way too much power over the rest of the players in the server, with the ability to not only kill players with ease, but they could destroy gold crates in rush simply by firing at it enough times, rather than being forced to plant an explosive device. Bad Company had no off-limit spawns, meaning enemies could easily spawn kill you and capture your main deployment base. 
It was common to have enemy helicopters fly directly to your base at the start of the match and destroy your helicopter before you even had a chance to fight back. And because Bad Company was only available on the consoles, mod support had gone completely out the window. To this date, there has not been a Battlefield game with any real mod support. And that pretty much sums up Battlefield's big console debut. Bad Company added some interesting new mechanics to the franchise, including unlimited destruction and the reassurance that DICE did know how to deliver an engaging and entertaining single-player story, in addition to a fun and addicting multiplayer experience. Unfortunately, because of the big switch to the new platform and the new engine, the gameplay seems to suffer quite a bit from major balancing issues and a lack of key features like the basic ability to communicate with squad members, making this game one of the more difficult ones to enjoy, especially for longtime Battlefield fans. DICE would need to pull out all the stops if they want to bring this franchise back from the dead to compete with the Call of Duty juggernaut that was now enjoying another successful release with Call of Duty World at War. And we'll talk about the beginning of DICE's comeback next time with Bad Company 2. If you enjoyed this look back, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned next week for another gaming retrospective.